So good afternoon and welcome to Cubicon 2019. And this is about IQV best practices. And I will introduce about IQV. So from the description, actually the speaker would be Zhang Jinpeng, but um, I come here rather than Zhang Jinpeng because he's the CTO. And this morning we discussed about the topic that is Thai QV best practices. And in order to avoid being sleepy, to let uh, our audience to be quite sleepy, so I come here to introduce the open source community status and the background of Thai QV best practices. So I will quickly to go through the details and what is TaiKV, why we are doing this project, this program, as well as its recent progresses. And the second half would be given by Zhang Jinpeng about the TaiKV hardcore technical details will be introduced by Mr. Zhang Jinpeng and how to design it. And we come from PinCap. I myself is the co-initiator, founder of PinCap. So you may ask, what is PinCap? So anyone have heard about it? Okay. Maybe most of you have heard about PinCap. Well, uh, as you can see from the list, this is CNCF company's contribution, the list of the contribution. And you can see globally the global contributors in the project, the top 10. Among the top 10, one is startup that is called Pink Camp. And IBM is falling behind. So this is our company. It is an open source company enterprise. And behind it, and the TaiDB, the TaiKV, actually, they are all the projects that we are doing. So talking about the topic today, actually, TaiKV, it is a key value database. And at that time, my idea is uh, if you have uh, know about the Apache, if you are quite familiar with it, you will know the HBase and HBase in CNCF. It is a database, and it is a project of the database. However, uh, CNCF actually uh, it does not have a design for scalable the database, a large scale database to support a sea of st key value storage. So that is why, at that time, uh, we come up with this project. But if you think about another edge base, well, actually, it's of no significance. So at that time, when we were doing this project, this program, actually, there are some important decisions. The first is we need to support the transaction. If you are quite familiar with edge base or consider the us. And you will know their consistency and their transactions does not perform quite well, especially HBase. If we want to operate, um, it will be full success or full failure. And this is quite hard to realize. However, in TaiKV, Compared with HBase, we have a big difference. That means in key value operation, we can support the ACID featured support. So this is the first aspect. And the whole design is by Spanner. And as you know, the Google distributed database, right? And the second point to make is another difference from the HBase. If you're quite familiar with HBase, you will know that its data is stored in HDFS. But actually, we uh, just leave it because we do not want the whole stack to rely on a British storage. So here, at the bottom, we use Raft and RocksDB to realize it and to improve the overall performance and to reduce the latency. Well, actually, this project was initiated in April 2016. And until now, three years have passed. 
Well, actually, our company, the Pink Cap, its original objective is to build a relational distributed database that is to uh, recreate Spanner. Well, at the very beginning, maybe you do not know that. At the very beginning, uh, the HBase supports the Taiki V, but it has various kinds of problems. So since 2016, we have a new key value storage so that we do not rely on HBase anymore. And later, we, found, we discover that this should not. Uh, this can work well in relational database for TiDB, but it also can work in other ways. For example, if you have the bottom layer storage, and if it can support key value and transaction, so that based on this system, you can build different distributed systems. For example, we can use TiKV to build another distributed uh, that is metadata so that we can change the metadata without concerning about the inconsistency of the data or the availability. So this is one scenario. Another scenario is that we can, uh, on top of the KV, we can have a Redis interface so that the uh, visitors can access and it can be horizontally extend. So some of the communities, they may be quite familiar with this process because they are doing it right now, and it enjoys high popularity. So our vision is to use Taiki V as a building block for the distributed platform. And that is why we contributed to CNCF, and we hope that the community can, based on Taiki V, to build new things. And this is the architecture, a very brief, a simple architecture of Taiki V. And later, Mr. Zhang Jinpeng will uh, give further details, so I will not elaborate on it. Actually, this is a very cloud-native project, and its language is Rust, and for the whole Thai KV, it is Rust community, the one of the largest open-source project, including Rust, its programming language, and its initiator, its founder, actually is working in our enterprise on the Thai KV project, and the GRBC, actually we use it from earlier times. And we are also the maintainer of its library. So online, if you want to use GRPC, and at the same time, it is uh, GRPC. And most probably, you will uh, use our products. Another thing, also we are the maintainer. And the storage, we use RocksDB. And it's storage, the ROS. We also, we're also the maintenance of these two things. So our relation with CNCF, after one year sandboxing, finally, uh, several weeks ago, we become the part of the CNCF, the incubator of CNCF. So this is the first incubator level database. And this project is also led by China's team, and it is initiated in China, so we feel quite proud of it. And this is TaiKV, its official website, you can visit it. So essentially, it is uh, how it has many relations together with TaiDB. And this slide shows uh, maybe the relation between TaiKV and TaiDB, and it has many users. In addition, uh, besides the core of TaiKV, if you want to participate in the contribution of this project, for example, uh, some friends would ask me, I want to contribute code to TaiKV, but I'm not a database expert. I'm not an expert, so how can I participate in this project? Well, actually, you can also think about uh, Building a database is not only about the database code, because it has some surrounding contributions. For example, now we have 
And present uh, its official terminal end is if you operate Thai KV, you can only use Go Library to access it. But uh, in fact, in Thai KV community, you can also build a pure Rust. Well, actually, this is quite weird. Why we don't have the Rust as the user end? Because you know the Thai KV. We use Go, but and we find uh, if you want to uh, make the hard call, it will be uh, quite troublesome. But now we have some improvement actually. But finally, we choose Rust. So until now, we have some re available resources and community to help us to do Rust and client. So in Rust. If anyone, anyone of you is interested in Rust, you can also participate in core contribution of Thai KV, but also you can join in uh, through Rust and Client, for example, to C++ and to the whole community. Well, for now, after entering into the CNCF, and the many community friends uh, provided the codes, about 90% of that from our company, well, about 90% was from uh, Alibaba group. And thank them very much. Now I will give the floor to my friend Jin Peng, and he is the co-developer of the Kai TV project. So he will just give some uh, related technology about the core of this project. Okay, thank you for your introduction. And he introduced the why we have the Kai TV project or what. Kai TV projector will brought to us. Next, I will just mainly from two aspects to introduce the project. First, it's about the uh, framework, and the main part is about the practice. That is to say, when we use a Kai TV projector, what problems we may encounter and how to address that. But for the first part, it's about the theories. Once we exploring the Kai TV topology cluster, what is the uh, uh, idea about it? And for the core part, it's called uh, multi raft. This our project is it's quite distributed the key value project, and we want to use a multi raft to ensure the data consistency. Since it's a distributed system, and we we'll definitely have the data migration, and these things must be completed automatically. If it is manually performed, then that was not that will be not. Uh, acceptable. But for the third part, I would like to check the flexibility of our program and how can we uh, achieve the flexibility of this project. And for the fourth part, it's about the ecosystem. But this slide shows this part is what Kai TV lays. Not only the Kai TV project, and if we want the project, we want the involvement of PD, which is the brain of the whole uh, cluster. And he manage the cluster data and the monitor the state of the cluster. With this status, we can schedule the capacity of the whole cluster. And from this layer, and we can find the transaction and the raw KV API. With this API, we can do whatever we want. For example, the TaiDB itself actually is a new circle database based on TV. And this part is actually the circle level. And it simplifies the circle level to key level. And send the information to Kai TV. Of course, you can build it yourself your own distributed system based on Kai TV. For example, you can seal the Redis protocol or other protocols. Okay. 
For the second part, it is a multi raft How to ensure the data? Actually, we throw the raft. If we only have one group, we may have some questions. For example, all the data or the copy of the data can only be stored on a single device, which is not acceptable since it cannot be extended. But now we have the multi raft that is to say we can a cut off the data into different ranges. And each range is actually a raft group. So this data can be maintained the consistency with this raft. What does the black box mean? That is to say, the black box is the leader of the raft. We have a leader in each raft. I guess it's not very hard to comprehend, to understand. And the, this is not the originally what data looks like. For at the beginning, you don't have the data, you only have the region. For example, you only have three copies like region 1 and region 2 and region 3. With, input, with data inputting, and more and more data will be input. On one single device, you have some constraints if not splitting or migrating these data. So we will do the auto split. Like the cells of our body, when the cells grow, the cells will split into two cells. So this is the same for all of the data. So how does split happen? For example, we have one region with a range of uh, from A to E. And this range or this, uh, this region is copied through the raft. When the volume increased to a certain amount, then it has to be split. For example, I want to uh, split it from range 1 uh, A to C and range C to E. Actually, this action can be copied by the raft, and these actions must be consistency. And the raft will do the action, and other region or other actor will just copy this actor. This is the splitting. Similarly, we also support merging. When will merging appear? When we delete this data, and the region will be empty. If the original data will not be collected, then the main data will increase. So now we just merge the neighboring region with a limited amount of data so that we can control the number of MAC data. This is the foundation of our uh, of the stability of the whole project. Since I have mentioned the split and the merging of the raft, now I will just talk about the scale. How do I migrate this workload? First, we have the translator. For example, originally, we have a one leader. And in the Kai TV, both read and write must have a leader. For example, in node 1, we have a leader. We selected one leader. If all the leaders selected on the same node, that, was not work. that does not work. So we need to have a mechanism to quickly migrate this leader. And in the raft, we have a transfer leader. We have such concept. For example, <coughs> in region 1, we have a compound to transfer the leader, which is quickly performed. And how to trigger this action and how to perform this action, actually, it is according to uh, the workload upload, uh, workload uploaded by KaiTV. It's according to the read flow, write flow, and disk memory, disk capacity. Once this information is sent to the PD, and the PD will charge which workload will be migrated to other devices. And now I will talk about the scaling. For example, we have three devices, and we have the data. Uh, I'll show on the slide, now I want to add another device. 
And once we added a new device, the action you performed is completed, and the others are automatically performed. For example, here the device will add a copy, and then we'll delete the copy in the original device. In this way, we perform the data migration. Similarly, if you just want to delete a device, this, uh, the workflow is actually the same. And actually, need to just kill this device and put the uh, process or the node back to another device. Well, Kai TV is not only one project, it also complains the client. It also includes clients and other related projects developed by ourselves. Now comes to the second part. It's about practice. The first step is about deployment. We have two aspects. One is single DC deployment and cross DC deployment. The second part is about Elast uh, elastically scale. And for the third part is about a very uh, issue that is also the performance for the distributed system, that is to fight with the hotspot, how to identify this hotspot and how to address that. For the fourth part, according to the Kai TV uh, cluster performance, what can we do? And for example, this is a single DC. For the single DC, we have different cabinets, like we have different racks. For example, okay. rack 1, rack 2, and rack 3. And if a good deployment or multi copies of the data we want to or scatter, we want to scatter the copy into different racks. Why we want to do that? Once the client or uh, the client end is offline, these rocks is still available. They can still be online. So we want to tell the PT or the Kai TV that this information stored on these devices is stored in which rack, in which uh, DC. Once this information are told to the PD, then the PD can allocate the copies of this data uh, in this way and balance the distribution of that. Okay. Well, if it comes to the cross IDC cross uh, cases, the setup is quite similar, but we still have another requirement, for example, the leader or the business is only in one city, for example, you have two city, city one and city two, but you have three centers or three DCs. Now, in this case, most of your applications are run in City 1, for example, in Beijing, then in another DC in the City 2, for example, Xi'an, it's for another uh, business. So this, uh, this case, you want to add the label to, to the rack to ensure your data is distributed, is well distributed. And in addition, we can control the leader or control the service copies and make them in the city one node, for example, in Beijing. How to do that, which is quite simple. Uh, if you have performed these actions, you will understand with the glance of these commands. For example, we want to configure your, the number of your copies, replicas, that is to say, and the other is to uh, configure it to the location labels. For example, we have zones, rack, and host. What does Kai TV do? And you only need to tell which Kai, uh, the Kai TV is in which cab, in which zone, in which rack. You only need to specify these parameters. And we also want to control, have precision control of these leaders to make sure that they will not appear in other uh, racks. Here we have the PD scheduler. 
so that we can migrate the leaders in other rocks in the same rock. Okay, we talked about the scale. Previously, I talked about the dynamic uh, demonstration. Well, here, I would say, what do we need to do if we want to add a new node? Actually, adding new is very simple, just like start a new Chi DB node with cropped PD address. In this way, we can automatically add a new node. That is quite simple, right? Why it is so simple? Or compared with the traditional database to migrate data or to scale it, actually it has a big difference. Why is that? That is what we are doing and what we are working on working on because we want to liberate or liberalize the productivity our workforce so that we cannot uh, we do not need to waste a lot of time on it and how about to remove the old notes uh, maybe actually just one order and then just turn it off well actually it is okay but actually it has some risks for example when you turn off the machine the host and you delete the data and then another machine another host to the replica or the disk uh, is broken down so it is risky because we need need to ensure that in raft the majority of the nodes when they exist so that your data is quite secure but if all the machines the hosts break down then you cannot ensure that the rest of the hosts it also maintains the data for example previously one data it has three replicas and now when you delete it it has only two replicas but if it is not within time to add the third replica on the other host and the other host break down so now you only have one replica but don't be worried about it so this time just remove it and don't close the deleted store now because the replication works of the store's regions is still going on and you should after the deleted store status turns to tombstone you can stop this type KB so what you need is first which which store you need to delete for example this type KB and what you need to do then is to store and delete. So what it is doing now, after the order, actually it is now doing the uh, migration of the data because the data on the uh, host or on the store, it only has two replicas. So you need one more action, that is to complement the two replicas into three replicas. But how can we know when it is ready, when it is okay? And you can see the state. You can see the state of the store. If after implementing this order, it will become offline, as you can see from the slide. So at this moment, don't close the deleted store now because the replication works of the store's region is still going on. So after the deleted store state is. Uh, trans, trans to tone stone. So after it becomes tone stone, when it is labeled as tone stone, that means all the replication works have been finished. So you can stop this type KV. And the next is about hotspot. In the distributed system, hotspot it is a um, very important issue. Why? We can see this image. If all the uh, if all the written work is through one node, single node, that means you will encounter some problems. The first is the single node will become the bottleneck of the whole cluster. And the second, after the data comes to the KV, you need to carry it out because you have large uh, amount of data so this is not recommended or if we discover this problem how should we address it uh, what kind of reasons would cause such problems first is the update time time is now and actually you will find that the time is incremental 
Um, so uh, those will be in the same region. And the second reason, the auto incremental ID. So similarly, it will uh, be written within this region. For example, if you do not know whether you have the auto incremental ID or update now update time, so if we can use a simple way to find out to identify if we have problems of hot spot. So if we can, uh, if we see this picture, bright in hot spot because we have the real time monitoring, the raw store and apply CPU. Mainly this, the left side it is for uh, raft distribution and raft writing. And the second is to implement raft, the state, to apply the state of raft. So mainly they are for writing hotspot. And if we say if it is not balanced between different time kV, for example, one is too high and the other is too low, that means we encounter the problems of hotspot. Reading is the same, because there are two metrics. The first is kV read. It is storage read pool handles the KV read, and if it is CPU is not balanced, then you will also encounter the problem of hotspot. And the next one is coprocessor. Well, I didn't introduce coprocessor just now. Actually, it does not support transactions, but also the interface and the framework for calculation for algorithm. I'll give you an example. For example, for Thai KV, actually originally it is a storage block for Thai DB. So there will be some complex algorithms calculation within it. For example, to do some sum work. Though. And during this process, if you uh, in input the Thai KV, it cannot understand the data so that um, it is hard for it to calculate and it is more reliable because first uh, its bandwidth cannot suffer and second your Thai DB becomes a bottleneck for computing but if the Thai KV can support the co-processing co framework and you tell it what uh, how to process this data so that it can accomplish this task. For example, it can calculate the average and then uh, to return it. So TIDB, after getting these results, it can do second calculation. So we can find that we have coprocessor CPU monitoring also. But if you yourself only use transaction or Thai KV interface, maybe you can only notice the read pool CPU. So after talking so much about hotspot in Thai KV, if there is an automated solution to the hotspot issue, well, actually we have because uh, it will regularly to update the region in the past period of time. Its traffic of the read and write, its read and write flow, as well as its CP CPU. So after sending it to the PD, it can calculate at present, the clusters which are busy and which are not busy, and it will automatically to, uh, dis to classify the read and write flow or traffic, and to ensure that it will not be concentrated in one small region. For example, when uh, you only have 100 M, and we co constantly read the 100 mega megabits. So you will encounter the problem of hotspot and how to address with this. Because we have the automated process, and we have a manual process,
So that means through the PD control, this is also a tool of us to find out the hottest region. For example, if it is very small with a small number of data, and if we can cut it, actually it cannot be cut automatically, but we will uh, seek to realize this function in future years. Yeah, so in future years we will work on this, but at present, the current version, you can manually to resign. And after the segmentation, uh, you do not need to do any more. So after the calculation, the, we can balance the hot regions between Thai KVs. So PD will learn from the collected data and distinguish hot read or write regions. For example, uh, to split this region by hand, and to have the split region, the operator adds split region. So we can split the region and the policy whether to adopt its, uh, the precise calculation or whether to split in which size. Well, it's okay. It is just two strategies. And you should really uh, split the region by hand. Another way to uh, just now we talk about the transfer leader. That means to split the leader. And then second, we also have um, the transfer peer for certain peer or certain data. We also provide some manual balance for this operator and transfer peer. So according to the order, you can just operate it directly. And the next part is about the performance tuning, how we identify the bottlenecks and how to fix those bottlenecks. For example, the writing, uh, because you have graph store and apply thread pool, and if they are high, if they are the bottleneck, the ref store thread pool or the apply thread pool. Also, for example, your disk I.O. if it is the bottleneck or if the CPU becomes the bottleneck. So actually they are all monitored and this slide shows the processes of the TIDB or Thai client and you can see there are many thread pools so according to your monitoring which part becomes the bottleneck you can adjust it through the parameters on the right side but if your disk becomes the bottleneck you can also adjust the manner for the compression and to have a higher level compression so that you can save the space for the disk and if the CPU usage is high you can use the compression type with low CPU cost the compression per level this is reading type KV we have two pools which is KV read and disk Q read the parameters are on the right side so according to the monitor you can observe these parameters the last one is rocks db it has a block cache so through adjusting the block cache the size of the block cache you can add or you can adjust the block cache well i think oh, okay so in this slide you can see accurately that the DB its accuracy and its success rate 
So the block cache, you need to leave some space for your system, the spa system page cache, because according to this process, the uh, from map table and get from block cache, and then reserve enough memory for the page cache. So directly to the page cache, it is compressed, and then uh, you decompress. So thank you. Due to the time limit, this is the end of my introduction, and I just go through it very quickly without too much details. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask me after the conference. Thank you. Thank you for listening to my.